people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. While Taliban's subsistence and training in the last two decades was largely being taken care of by Islamabad, it is now providing them military support too in waging a war against Kabul. Vice President of Afghanistan Amrullah Saleh has accused Islamabad of intimidating Kabul with airstrike consequences for retaliating to the Taliban's territory capturing spree. Afghanistan says Pakistan's nefarious agenda vis-a-vis -vis Afghanistan stands exposed today. An ill-equipped Kabul has also urged regional and global powers to assist Afghanistan in the larger interest of the region and the world. A series of tweets by Vice President of War Torn Afghanistan, Amrullah Saleh, has made things crystal clear for those who were skeptical of Pakistan driving the entire Taliban resurgence. An airstrike by Pak Air Force would follow if Kabul tried to dislodge Taliban from its border with Pakistan, said an official Pakistani statement, according to Saleh. Taliban fighters have captured the spin Buldak chaman border, the second most important crossing on the border with Pakistan and a major source of revenue for the Western-backed government in Kabul. Although Kabul has claimed that its security forces had retaken control of the town hours after the Taliban seized it, Taliban spokesman Zabihullah Mujahid dismissed that and said his forces still held it and as a result, common people are suffering. The fighting that intensified after the U.S. President Joe Biden announced in April a complete U.S. withdrawal by symbolic September 11 has reached unprecedented levels in the past couple of weeks. While Taliban claims to have captured around 200 districts, Kabul has been denying their claims with counterclaims of reclaiming many of the captured territories. In the past 10 weeks alone, over 3,600 civilians have been killed. The country has also lost 1,000 soldiers since then, 200,000 people being displaced internally and conflict in 150 districts. Meanwhile, an optimistic Kabul has said that regional players like India can play a positive role in restoring stability in the country. Afghan ambassador in New Delhi, Farid Mamunse, believed India could positively influence the peace process if it were to participate in it. India has been a major partner uh, and India can play a very constructive role uh, India can play a role in, in, in our peace process uh, together with other responsible regional actors like Iran and in, in Russia. Uh, India can, u utilizing its convening power uh, to put more pressure on Taliban through diplomatic channels uh, to come to the negotiating table and put an end to the violence. India has for several years been assisting Afghanistan in nation building, including its contributions to Afghanistan's education, politics and diplomacy. Meanwhile, the Taliban has resumed what they were always known for, the hardline Sharia philosophy. 
in what could be termed as horrific, reports say Taliban has notified in the region it has captured to submit details of unmarried and married women under 45 years of age. The Taliban who ruled Afghanistan with an iron fist from 1996 until their ouster in 2001 by the US didn't allow any freedom to women. They were forced to cover from head to foot, were not allowed to leave their houses without a male companion and were not allowed to work. Emboldened by the departure of foreign forces by a September target and with peace talks stalled, Taliban have already assumed the return of their rule and if that becomes a complete reality, then not just all the progress made in these years will be reversed, but experts fear the country might witness a civil war too. Members and supporters of Pakistan-based Muttahida Qaumi Movement or MQM held anti-Pakistan demonstrations in UK and Canada to condemn PM Imran Khan's statement in Pakistan's National Assembly suggesting assassination of their leader Altaf Hussain. While they demanded security for their leader, they also urged the UK leadership to give Islamabad a befitting reply for even thinking of challenging UK's integrity and sovereignty. These people demonstrating in front of 10 Downing Street, the residence of UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson, want him to teach Pakistan leadership a lesson. Members of MQM or the Mutahida Qaumi Movement, the organization of Muhajirs who are routinely persecuted in Pakistan, took to the streets this time to condemn Prime Minister Imran Khan for his statement in the National Assembly. He had said that he would get their leader, Altaf Hussain, eliminated through a drone attack if he gets access to British soil. They also urged the authorities to provide Hussain with more security so that he's not attacked by Islamabad-backed network in Britain. हमारी दरखास्त अपील है कि कायदे तेरी गलताओं से बाई का जो उनका स्टेटस है उस हिसाब से उनका ख्याल रखा जाए सिक्योरिटी प्रोवाइड की जाए और वजीराज़ में इमरान खान से पूछा जाए कि वो किस बेहास किस बुनियाद पे वो ये बयान दे रहे हैं कि बर्तानिया 30 साल से टेररिस्ट को यहाँ पर रखा हुआ है a number of Muslims who feared violence post-independence in 1947 settled in Pakistan's Sindh province. The property vacated by Sindhi Hindus who were persecuted to flee to India was allocated to the Indian Muslim immigrants, popularly known as Muhajirs. However, despite being a part of the majoritarian religious community, Mohajirs are still subjected to systematic exploitation and compelled to live as second-class citizens. From a community that had grown up the ladder through merit-based excellence, Mohajirs are one of the most badly offs today. Demanding the rights, they say, is at par with committing a serious offence. And while this time they are demanding their own rights, they seek London support too, for they say Pakistan has attacked Britain's integrity and sovereignty. Every nation, every culture, every man is standing in one place against the Taliban Khan. How do you talk about this? One is to kill the Taliban Khan, the other is to kill the soil. While Pakistan has been eliminating dissenters with impunity inside its own territory, its intelligence agency ISI has managed to penetrate deep into the European and the American cities, where most of the exiled Kashmiris, Balots, or Sindhis are living in hideouts. 
and it has successfully targeted them there too. Only a few days back, Nadeem Nusrat, former MQM convener, survived an assassination attempt in the United States. And this is not an exclusive case. Earlier, journalists Sajid Hussain and Karima Baloch were found dead under suspicious circumstances in Sweden and Canada. Experts believe that Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan, who had recently praised China's communist model over the Western democratic model, is on the verge of embracing totalitarianism. And the days don't appear far when there will be discrimination and killings and the world will never get to know. Moving on. Months after the Himalayan nation, Nepal plunged into a political crisis, which also included double dissolution of parliament by K.P. Sharma Oli, the country has a new prime minister in veteran politician Sher Bahadur Deoba. The president appointed him to the chair after the Supreme Court of the country reinstated the parliament and removed K.P. Sharma Oli from the leadership. The road ahead, however, is not going to be easy as Deoba has been asked to prove majority on the floor of the House in next 30 days. In a major turn of events in the Himalayan nation, Sher Bahadur Deuba, a veteran politician who has held the chair of Prime Minister four times before, was appointed as the Prime Minister for the fifth time following a Supreme Court ruling. The Apex Court order was based on the 30 writ petitions, including one from Deuba himself and 146 parliament members, demanding the appointment of Deuba as the Prime Minister. Calling his claim over the PM chair unconstitutional, the Supreme Court overturned Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli's 21st May decision to dissolve the House of Representatives and ordered the appointment of Deuba. K.P. Sharma Oli had earlier dissolved the House in December last year, which was reconstituted in February 23. However, after failing to gather enough support on the floor of the House, Oli dissolved it again in May. पूर्वाग्रहवाखराबावनानली ईमानदारी ताका साथ गढ़ने चुरा ईमानदारी ताका साथ गढ़ने चुरा गढ़ने चु It wasn't just the political instability that was brewing in the country, but the people suffering due to routine fallouts had also expressed their anger. Several protests were carried out earlier this month against K.P. Sharma Oli, who the protesters accused was not leaving the chair despite not having the majority. The protesters set Oli's effigy on fire while sloganeering against the government. Partigamiko Nike, Kepiolile, Yodesma, Dades Marvot, Sasan Rosota Salone, John Taco, Tana Partility Mulak, Sasta, Tai Partility Savalai, Bigotan Garne, the Afulai, Ziaman Lago, Jay Garne. 
Experts say that the decision will prove to be a big respite for the common people who have been enduring a multi-layered crisis in the absence of real leadership. Nepal has been hit by the second wave of the pandemic with infection rates showing no signs of abating even after days of strict curbs. A strong leadership with focused decision-making, they say, can save more lives as the country has also not procured and ordered enough vaccines amid the growing crisis. And now news from the Asian continent that hit the headlines this week. Beijing has said that it expressed strong opposition to what it called the United States' wrong position after the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said Washington rejected unlawful maritime claims in the South China Sea. Blinken made the comments while addressing a video conference with foreign ministers from the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN. He said Washington stands with Southeast Asian nation claimants in the face of Chinese coercion. The meeting with the 10-member bloc is the first since the Biden administration took office in January and comes amid concerns among diplomats and others that Washington has not been paying sufficient attention to a region that is crucial to its regional strategy to counter an increasingly powerful China. Japan's Furukawa Electric has been developing fiber technology. Based on its traditional technology, the company is now enhancing itself through a cutting-edge technology in the field of energy, information, heat conduction, connection and storing. Furukawa has developed and launched an industrial laser. Fiber laser of Furukawa has so many strong points like high beam quality, time stability, high reliability and high effect. Those ideal functions enabled quick expansion in the field of metal material processing field. Deep melting, high-speed processing and decreasing welding defects enabled to solve the problem of industry. The strain is less than general arc welding. This characteristic ensures high-speed processing. えっと、お客様が来られて一緒に実験をしたり、え、で、外から入ってきたえ、レーザー光ファイバーの中を通りまして、このような、え、加工用の光学系ガルバノスキャナーを通って、え、加工点の金属を加工することになります。Welding of thin cuper board is a key technology. Furukawa developed the machine for fiber laser plus blue laser. It enables to control exposure of laser to make binding plural thin copper board. Removing the rust is also future promise technology. Furukawa's fiber laser system cultivated based on fiber optic technology will contribute to solving the problems of global warming and zero carbon emission. Furukawa's technology is integral to establish future sustainable global environment. Traditional dyed fabrics are fluttering softly as they are hung to dry. These beautiful design materials will be used later to make yukata, Japanese casual kimono. This traditional dyeing workshop in Tokyo's Edogawa ward has been in business for over 100 years. They use a 300-year-old technique of hand dyeing called chuzen, which means pouring dye originated in the early Edo period. Chuzen 
、まあ、4つの工程に分かれておりまして、まあ、1つが後ろで見ていただいている、まあ、白い反物からスタートしてで板場で柄付けをして高野で染色をして水元でまあ残った自分の染料とかのりを全部落としてあげた後またこういうふうにあの天気の外で干されるようになります。Unlike machine printing, this method dyes the threads of the fabric rather than just the surface of the cloth. This allows superimposition of delicately illustrated images, refined expression of color gradations, and double sided reproduction of images. This shop in Tokyo specializes in selling traditional dyed fabric that can be tailored later into yukata. Mastering traditional dyeing takes many years. With Japanese arts and crafts passed to generations, beautiful yukata can be still seen in many places across Japan. India's culture is rooted in colorful festivals that date back to ancient history. One such festival is the Holy Rath Yatra, also known as Chariot Festival, which is celebrated every year across India with great joy and enthusiasm. It is a significant Hindu festival as Lord Jagannath, along with his siblings, come by chariots for general sojourn and go to Gundicha Temple. After a stopover of nine days at the Gundicha Temple, the deities return to their abode. Decked up chariots, processions, and religious fanfare by tens of thousands of devotees, this is what an annual chariot festival or Rat Yatra looks like. However, due to strict measures imposed to prevent a spike in the infection rate, the festival in the town of Puri, whose annual spectacle is popular and visited by people from around the world, the festivities were a low key affair this time around. Only priests and servitors who tested RT PCR negative were allowed to participate in the procession. Rath Yatra is one of the biggest festivals celebrated in Odisha, and it is <coughs> widely celebrated in all over Odisha. And people outside India also come to Odisha to see how Rath Yatra is celebrated, and. Um, It is usually celebrated in a very grand way, but due to Corona, uh, first wave and lockdown, uh, we haven't celebrated in it in more than two years. Jagannath Rath Yatra or the Chariot Festival commemorates Hindu Lord Jagannath's annual visit to Gundicha Temple near Bala Gandhi Chakapuri. The festival is celebrated by worshiping the Lord. Who is also known as the ruler of the world according to Hindu mythology, with his elder brother Balbhadra and sister Subhadra. According to religious customs, Lord Jagannath is taken out on a chariot and taken to the famous Gundicha Mata Temple, where the Lord rests for seven days. After this, the return journey of Lord Jagannath begins. Last two years, we have been because of this pandemic, we have been suffering from uh, not uh, by staying home and not going out and uh, obeying the COVID guidelines as administered by the uh, Puri administration. And uh, for the last two years, we have been unfortunate to not see God, Lord Jagannath. And this function is particularly where Lord comes out of the temple and visits all his bhaktas. And this time also, like last year, we also could not uh, participate in the chariot festival, which happens once in a year. The auspicious festival was also celebrated in other parts of the country with limited gatherings. The hymns of Jai Jagannath reverberated around the temple premises as devotees offered prayers to the deities. Over the years, such festivals have gone a long way in highlighting the cultural treasure trove of the states of the region, particularly focusing on the spiritual traditions.
The Jagannath temple in Puri, which is of utmost importance to Hindu devotees, is one of the Char Dham pilgrimages. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.